The esophagus is the muscular tube that carries food and liquid from the mouth to the stomach. It averages usually between 10 to 13 inches in length. The wall of the esophagus has several layers that become important when we talk about cancer. Cancer of the esophagus starts from the inmost layer of this hollow tube and grows outward, starting from the mucosa, then the submucosa, and finally towards its specialized muscle. This thick band of muscles is called the muscularis propria. The outermost layer of the esophagus is formed by connective tissue and is called the adventitia. Unlike other intestinal organs like the stomach or colon, there is no true specialized tissue outside of the muscle of the esophagus. Thus, there is one less layer before a potential cancer can become very aggressive and invade adjacent structures. There are two main types of esophageal cancer known as squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. The former was at one time responsible for almost 90% of all esophageal cancers. However, in the past decade, adenocarcinoma has become the predominant type in the United States, especially with its association with reflux disease. We do not yet know exactly what causes most esophageal cancers. However, certain factors are known to be associated with an increased risk in developing this cancer. These include age over 60 years, male sex for which men are three to four times more likely than women to develop the disease, history of tobacco use, history of chronic or heavy use of alcohol, irritation and damage of the esophagus, such as from chronic heartburn, which can cause a condition known as Barrett's esophagus, or from prior ingestion of lye or other caustic substances, esophageal motility disorder, such as achalasia, obesity, and diets low in fruits and vegetables and certain minerals and vitamins. The best treatment for this cancer, like any other cancer, is prevention. Though we cannot change our age or sex, we can abstain from tobacco and alcohol. Improvement in our diet and regular exercise can also help. Yet, when all these fail, cancer can still develop and early diagnosis becomes crucial. In the next section, we will discuss the symptoms of esophageal cancer and the various tests that are used to evaluate and diagnose this disease.